called Tempayute. And Tempayute is one of the mountains over here to the right. And some years ago, Union Carbide had a tungsten mining operation out here. And so the population of the town was considerably larger, you know, more like 500 people. Are those wild cattle? Those, those are not wild cattle, they belong to Mr. Medlin. Oh. So they're you know, over to the left, you can see them out there as well. Oh, you see them. And so they're just grazing out here on the on the grass on the natural terrain, and they ha they have ear tags and GPS trackers on them. So nice. Mr. Medlin can keep track of his animals. Mm. Sometimes though, they they come out on the highway and bad things happen. Mm. Any mutilations? Uh, none reported. <laughs> At least not here. So eventually the town, uh, when the mine closed and a lot of people moved out, the town was renamed Sand Springs. And eventually it was called Rachel, and that's, be, that's in honor of the first child born in the community, Rachel Jones. So that's how it got its current name. Now a little bit about the story of Rachel. While she was still rather young, her family left this area and moved up to Washington State near Mount St. Helens. And you recall back in 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted and, of course, put a lot of volcanic ash and toxic gases into the air. And Rachel apparently acquired some lung ailment as a result of exposure to those things and ultimately proved fatal to her. So she's not buried here, but that's, that's her story and why the town is named Rachel. Skinwalker Ranch? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah it's up in uh, up in Utah. You heard what, what's going on there? We think so. There's a show, tell I don't watch the show. I, I find it's uh, it's not as scientific as somebody as serious as those scientists would be. I think it's there's a lot of production yes. to it. So I'm not really into that, but the story of uh, Mr. Bigelow and uh, Mr. Fugel and their, dis their National Institute of Discovery Sciences and their findings and the activities that happened on the ranch, uh, pretty incredible stories. So they're dealing with some type of intelligent phenomenon that always stays ahead of them, one step ahead of them, plays tricks on them, is, is in some ways deceptive and uh, it doesn't all involve UFOs or cattle mutilations, right, although well, it does. cows and cars. There's a dead cow oh, right there. Should we analyze that? Because it looked almost like the, the belly was ripped out. No, that one, that, that one was bloated, so it was starting to, uh, you know, the, the decay and the gases was causing it to uh, expand. That's interesting. Yeah, the, the mutilations are incredible as well. You all here probably know about Linda Moulton Howe's Strange Harvest book and uh, her work with the sheriffs and the, how strange those mutilations are. They're not just restricted to cattle either. Actually, one man in Brazil, same thing happened to him.
today is going to be on the dry lake bed across the highway from Rachel. And we'll see it here in just a moment as we come around this next curve toward the bottom of the hill. You'll see it off in the distance, a light patch of dirt. So remember, once again, we were talking about, you know, one time this area was underwater. And this valley in front of us, Sand Spring Valley, still represents a low point. Uh, so you know, there was a body of water out here at one time. Now the, the lake bed itself, unlike some other ones, is clay and not salt. So the Bonneville Salt Flats, Badwater Basin, and Death Valley, etc. are salt flats. This is clay. Uh, we're going to drive out on there later, just kind of get an experience of what that's like. Not something you see in other places in the country, but there it is, kind of off to the left a little bit, that dark light patch of dirt out there. But that lake bed does not have a name. It is unnamed. So, because of that, usually when someone sees something for the first time, and this is the first time you've seen it, you get to name it. So what are we going to call it? <laughs> Not sure. What would you call it? What would I call it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's no fun. <laughs> we can call it Lake Trudeau and it's all dried up. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the PM of Australia now? <laughs> Cattle Cross. Well, we've called Lake Biden. He's pretty dried up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's Rachel right in front of us. What there is of it. That's All right, so again, this section of highway we're on right now, this is where that scene was filmed in the movie. So the camera was over there to the left and then facing the highway. So Russell Case and the other guy were go over there with this in the background. So today we'll call it Lake Biden. <laughs> this is Rachel, is it? Yeah, Everything Rachel's we see, that's the left. entirety of it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so over in the distance to the left, that's uh, some agriculture. That is putting all your farms. They grow alfalfa out there. Uh, alfalfa is uh, primarily cattle feed that's sold to uh, dairy operations down in California. We just got cellular contact. You just got cell? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's, let's try calling Mr. Higby now. Chris, at, Chris between the 25 and 26. Mile marker 25 and 26. Do you want me to call? Yeah. 